Welcome to our Citus Link Pro user guide series. I'm Ben Dynas, Director of Product UX UI at Aperture, and also a 15 year local 728 lighting programmer working on projects like Suicide Squad, Thor 2, Jungle Book, and many more. This is our step-by-step -step guide to DMX, DMX profiles, universes, SACN, Artnet, and more. Let's get started. So what is lighting control and why do I need it? Lighting control is used in film, TV, theater, and rock and roll to remotely control lighting fixtures and stage effect devices. In film and TV, it is used for instant lighting adjustments, dynamic cues, and customized effects. Since time is valuable and your shoot needs to move quickly, remote lighting control helps you make your day with the ability to change colors with the tap of a button or a screen. Before we get into DMX, let's talk about a simpler form of lighting control. Bluetooth. Bluetooth operates on the 2.4 GHz frequency, enabling short-range wireless communication and is commonly used for direct device to light control. Many lighting manufacturers, including Aperture, utilize proprietary Bluetooth control methods. Bluetooth control sends commands from your mobile device or tablet to the lights, adjusting their values in real time. Typically, Bluetooth transmits between 4 to 10 packets per second a Bluetooth packet is sent only when changes are made. It is not a constant stream of data. A direct Bluetooth connection links each fixture individually to the controller. However, this method has limitations. It supports only a small number of fixtures, has a very short range, and transmits commands one at a time. Imagine your mobile device as a mail carrier and your light as a house. In a direct connection, the mail carrier delivers a letter with instructions, such as changing the light's color to blue, directly to each house, with a delivery rate of 4 to 10 letters per second, depending on the signal strength and congestion. Bluetooth Mesh is a self-healing network that allows lights to relay data to one another. If one light disconnects, the data automatically reroutes through another path, ensuring continuous communication. Bluetooth Mesh overcomes constraints by passing signals from one fixture to the next, increasing the range. However, since each relay takes time, there can be slight delays in execution. We use Citus Bluetooth Mesh, or Citus BT for short, which expands Bluetooth capabilities beyond single device control. In a Bluetooth Mesh network, the mail carrier delivers letters to the first house, which then passes them to the next, and so on. This method ensures broader reach, but each house must wait for its turn to receive the message. However, each letter can now contain instructions for multiple lights. Both methods are prone to interference from other wireless devices, walls, and environmental factors. When lights are controlled over Bluetooth, they only need to be paired with the device. There is normally no additional configuration or settings needed on the light. Bluetooth control is ideal for small productions with limited manpower, offering simple, flexible wireless control where precise timing is not critical. Think of it as remote manual control. When timing, speed, and flexibility become essential, it's time to use DMX, the industry standard for professional lighting control. Now let's talk about DMX, Digital Multiplex. DMX is a precise and scalable communication protocol widely used in professional lighting for big rock and roll shows, theater productions, and large motion picture productions. DMX grants the ability to simultaneously handle a single unit or a large number of lights, moving heads, or other fixtures for complex and synchronized lighting setups. DMX consists of a packet of data that describes an arbitrary value between zero and 255 sent as a channel to represent a light control parameter. Each light can have many control parameter channels or a single control parameter channel. A single color light, like a tungsten light bulb on a dimmer, has one parameter, intensity, and thus occupies one DMX channel. A bicolor light containing daylight and tungsten emitters could have two parameters, intensity and color temperature, which would be two DMX channels. A simple RGB light could have three parameters, red intensity, green intensity, and blue intensity, and therefore three DMX channels. Therefore, a DMX parameter is a fixture attribute to modify the output of a light. With modern LED lights, they can utilize many more parameters like intensity, color temperature, red, green, blue intensities, 
hue, saturation, pan, tilt, focus, zoom, shutter, strobe, and so many more. In order to control these parameters, each parameter must be mapped to a DMX channel. The arrangement of these parameters and DMX channels is called a DMX profile. In addition to the profile being correct, each light has to listen to the correct DMX channel addresses for independent control. These DMX addresses are sequential from 1 to 512. The first channel that a light listens to for its DMX profile is called a DMX start address. For example, this can be 001 or 201. The DMX start address must have enough space after it for all of the channels in its DMX profile so it does not exceed channel 512. The DMX start address and the DMX profile set on the controller or lighting console must match to exactly the setting on the light in order for the light to function correctly. So back on the street with the mail carrier, we are delivering a letter to all the houses in your area. Each letter contains the value of every DMX channel, 1 through 512. Each letter is sent to all of the houses every 23 milliseconds, or 44 times per second. In this scenario, each house is a light, the letter is a DMX packet, and the mail carrier is the DMX output from the controller. In order for each light to listen to the correct channel, you must have your address correct with the mail carrier. So if a light is patched at channel 201, when it receives the letter, it has a message for 201. The light then outputs the corresponding value according to the 0 to 255 value. The light only responds to instructions beginning at its DMX start address and the channels assigned to its profile, ignoring all other values in the DMX packet. So the DMX packet is now being delivered from the controller to each light's address and carrying the value of every DMX channel. As I mentioned, those values are from 0 to 255. Because of the light's address and profile, these values are then mapped to the DMX parameters. For example, for intensity, zero DMX value equates to 0% intensity, the light would be off. And 255 DMX value equates to 100% intensity, the light would be full up. 50% intensity would be 128 DMX value. For CCT or color temperature, a zero DMX value would equal the minimum CCT, like 2000K and 255 would equal the maximum CCT, like 10,000K. So 128 DMX value is halfway, and in this range would be 6,000K. Now, as we know, a DMX packet contains a total of 512 channels. We call this grouping of 512 channels a DMX universe. Each universe contains DMX addresses one through 512. So back on our street, each mail carrier would be sending a universe. They are sending letters to the houses assigned every 23 milliseconds, and each letter sent is a DMX packet. Each universe of DMX data can be sent on a 5-pin DMX cable or wirelessly with a radio transmission protocol. A common protocol used is called CRMX, or Cognitive Radio Multiplexer. When run with a DMX cable, it must originate from the controller and run to every light. This can be daisy-chained. This means the data signal goes into the first light and then out of the first light and then into the second light and so on. Or the signal can go to an OptiSplitter, a device that splits the signal into multiple daisy chains. When sent wirelessly via CRMX, the transmitter sends a universe to any device paired with the transmitter. So the mail carrier can deliver these packets to each house on a wire or they could launch them from the transmitter where they land at each house wirelessly. In both cases, it is the same letter being read by each house. When you need to send out multiple universes, each universe must be contained in its own wired daisy chain or sent from its own transmitter. So each universe must be sent out separately for DMX. In summary, every light must be connected or paired to the correct DMX universe, must have the correct DMX profile selected and the DMX start address set. This must be done at both the light and the controller, and they must match exactly. With DMX profiles, each profile can be 8-bit or 16 bits. We call this the DMX resolution. In 8-bit profiles, each DMX parameter is controlled by one DMX channel with the value of 0 to 255. This means, including 0, there are 256 available steps to use. 8-bit profiles generally perform well depending on how the light firmware is made. 
The limitation is that you might see the steps happening in front of your eyes. For example, 360 degrees of hue must be divided into 256 steps. This means one must alternate between one or two degree steps within the control channel. You can see where this would be the problem. That is where 16-bit profiles come in. 16-bit profiles use two DMX channels for every parameter. For every step between the first DMX channel, there are now 256 sub-steps represented by the second DMX channel. This method allows for a total number of steps of 65,536. You can think of it like this. Between step 128 and 129 of the first DMX channel, there are 256 additional steps between these that are marked by the second channel. With this many steps, it can mean much better control performance from your lighting fixtures. Generally speaking, if you have enough DMX channels to choose 16-bit profiles, it should perform better than the 8-bit profiles. Profile selection is also very important for your light to function in the manner that you want. The light's profile is the layout of the parameters in a certain order so that the DMX packet gets to control the desired parameter. For instance, lights can be controlled in HSI mode with a single parameter for hue, saturation, and intensity. HSI C Plus provides parameters for hue, saturation, intensity, color temperature, and plus and minus green. In XY mode, there are parameters for the color chromaticity coordinates of the light. One common DMX profile is CCT RGB. This profile consists of intensity, CCT, plus and minus green, crossfade, and red, green, and blue intensities. This DMX profile controls the white point separately from the RGB values, so the user can choose how to desaturate the color of the light. What all of this means is that you will have different control communication options within the console or controller. In Cytoslink Pro, in the parameter control area, it can automatically map its common color control user interface to all the actual values output to the profile-specific DMX channels. So that means that if you select an HSI profile, you can still use the RGB controls to set the color. Or if you are working in an RGB profile, you can still use the hue saturation controls to provide the same result. However, if you choose a profile that does not have CCT to set the color temperature of the light, the approximation of the color temperature may be off. So professionals often select one with CCT. The most commonly used profiles are CCT RGB and HSIC+. All in, I recommend choosing 16-bit CCT RGB for most lighting profiles because of the resolution of 65,536 steps and control of the white point and color. A light usually has many different DMX profiles contained within its firmware as written by the manufacturer. One must choose the correct profile to allow a light to listen for and interpret its DMX channel values correctly. The DMX footprint or the total amount of channels a DMX profile occupies also come into account so that you can make sure to fit all of your lights within the amount of DMX universes you have available. So now we understand what a DMX universe is. Essentially, each melt carrier is a DMX universe. When the total number of fixtures exceeds a DMX universe of 512 channels, you would need another mail carrier to deliver letters on a new route, representing an additional DMX universe. This would require a separate DMX cable or a new transmitter to handle the extra data. If I'm sending out 15 DMX universes, this can end up being a lot of DMX cables. The solution for this is instead of sending one universe down one line of DMX cable, we can now send multiple universes down an ethernet cable. We can now have each mail carrier send the letter on the same line, except now they are no longer sending a DMX packet symbolized by a letter, they are now sending an ethernet packet symbolized by a package. An ethernet packet can contain multiple universes of data in each packet. Generally, the user chooses the protocol based on what all of the networked lighting fixtures can listen to. Both of these lighting protocols transport multiple universes down one simple ethernet cable or Wi-Fi signal. With both streaming ACN and Ardnet, the user must set the DMX address and the profile, and now also the universe of the light fixtures. The advantage is, now those fixtures can listen to the network for their DMX data instead of being limited by traditional DMX cabling, which is restricted to one universe worth of DMX data. Ethernet DMX protocols, on the other hand, can send thousands of universes on one cable. When sending DMX packets across Ethernet cables using SACN or ARTNET, 
we need to use additional hardware to do so. Network switches are used to split and distribute multiple lines of Ethernet in different directions. A network switch is a multi-port Ethernet distribution box, the same hardware used in the IT world. When plugging in an Ethernet cable into a light, each cable must originate from a network switch. If a light fixture has two Ethernet ports, the Ethernet data can be daisy-chained through a light. Network switches can be managed or unmanaged. This means that the Ethernet data can pass through to all the ports in an unmanaged switch, or you can filter the data going through to each port with a managed switch. Managed switches are generally used when there are large amounts of universes or if the network lines are used for other types of data or video. Using Ethernet protocols is not only for lights that can receive SACN or RNet directly. When you need to change from Ethernet to DMX, we use a device called an Ethernet node. An Ethernet node receives the RNet or SACN signal and converts it into 5-pin DMX. This can give you all the benefits of running multiple universes down one Ethernet cable and then splitting the universes apart at the end of the line. Ethernet nodes can have one DMX output or many DMX outputs. They can also assign the DMX ports to any universe of their choosing. Many aperture lights can also function as an Ethernet node by receiving SACN or RNet on their network port and then outputting their selected universe out of the DMX port. As I mentioned before, there are different control protocols you can choose to use when implementing Ethernet. There is RNet Broadcast, RNet Unicast, SACN Unicast, and SACN Multicast. With RNet Broadcast, every light listens to every universe. The light therefore has to process through all of the data. This means it does not scale very well with multi-pixel fixtures, since a large amount of pixels must be listened to by every light in the network. This could result in a stuttery or completely frozen control if it exceeds eight universes. With RNet Unicast, the controller sends an individual packet with just its universe to every light. It also requires a specific IP address, so the control software must have the specific IP address for each light in addition to its DMX universe and start address and DMX profile. Setting individual IP addresses can be very time consuming. Both Artnet Unicast and SACN Unicast require the same type of setup with IP addresses. With SACN Multicast, the controller only sends one packet of data per universe. The light then only listens for its own universe from the multicast signal. This method is both the most efficient and simplest way to send large amounts of DMX data via Ethernet. Aperture lights with Ethernet capabilities can listen to Artnet, and many of the newer products can also listen to SACN. So that was the basics of lighting control and DMX terminology. I know it was a lot of information. We went over DMX, DMX parameters, DMX profiles, universes, and ethernet protocols. As always, your feedback helps us to continue to improve Citus Link Pro. So let us know what you think. For more information, check out help.citus.link. Thanks for watching.